and welcome to the Dennis Bloodnock channel. Hi there, I'm Lottie Rose. Hey, I'm Jessie. And I'm Bianca J. And, and this, this is, is the review for the Nikon D700. Hello Bloodnock fans and YouTubers in general. Well, the Nikon D700, a 12 megapixel full frame DSLR which began production, depending on where you are in the world, in late 2007 or early 2008 and continued production until 2012. Now, this particular model, the Nikon D700, is still very popular as a used purchase today in 2023. And here is a series of Nikon D700s used which are available for purchase right now. Well YouTubers, as we can see the UK based D700s are between 269 for the absolute best of the best, low shutter count and in very good condition, all the way down to £89 for the ones that are just spare parts. In the US, that's near enough $400, and that's at the B&H website. And then if you go out to Australia, there are Nikon D700s for around $800 on eBay. Now, the thing about the Nikon D700 is that it produces very good quality 12 megapixel images, including punchy but accurate colours and very good quality images. Now, let us go through the setting up of the Nikon D700 for studio-based imagery, including portraits, beauty, glamour, fashion, with studio strobes, outdoor and Variable lighting setups and nighttime low light setups. Let's see the settings and the menu selections, buttons, controls, switches, etc., and how you set up the Nikon D700. Well, YouTubers, here we are with my Nikon D700 complete with 24 to 85 millimeter f 3.5 to 4.5 lens and battery grip. Now firstly when setting up the camera to use for any kind of shoot I make sure that the memory card has been uh, that, that all the uh, images on the memory card have been transferred to my computer and then in preparation for any shoot we go into the menu area now for anybody who has used a Nikon DSLR or mirrorless camera you will find that the menus are pretty similar to what you have used previously now the first thing I do is I format the memory card. So here we go in the menu, going for format memory card, press the OK button down here on the bottom left and we format the memory card. 
as you can see that takes a few seconds then we move down the menu and what we are going for here is to clean the sensor so again we select that go for clean now and the uh, image sensor is now cleaned and we are ready for use now I am going to show you the settings that I use for three different types of photography for studio work with studio strobe lighting for glamour, fashion, beauty, uh, portrait type images. Then for outdoor location shooting, slash indoor shooting with variable lighting and home living room lighting. And then finally, the last section, which will be for long exposure, nighttime outdoor shoot. So first things first, we will go for the studio shoots with studio strobe lighting. So you switch the camera on and uh, as you can see the on off button is uh, around the uh, shutter button. We then press the mode button here on the top and using the back dial we change this setting here and we go for M for manual mode. Then moving to the back of the camera, we press the info button and using the back dial, you can change the shutter speed. And for studio shoots, I go for one two hundredth of a second. Now switching to the front dial, which is just ahead of the just ahead of the shutter button, switching to the front dial, we change the aperture to f8 finally in preparation for studio shoots we move back to the top of the camera press and hold the iso button and you can see that that now appears on the top of the camera the iso of 1000 now for studio work with strobe lighting I use the back dial and I go down to an ISO of 200 so there we are shutter speed 200 one 200th of a second manual mode f8 aperture and an ISO of 200 now switching to outdoor shooting and also uh, shooting indoors in uh, living room lighting the first thing i do again on the top of the camera press the m for mode button and use the back dial and go round to the a for aperture option and then moving to the back screen I change the aperture I bring that down to the lowest aperture number that the lens will allow me down to about f2.8 usually I don't shoot below f2.8 although if the, if the lens will allow it 
I may come down to f2. But in this case, the lowest aperture is at 14 mil on the zoom lens, and that gives me an aperture of f3.5. Now, as I will be shooting outdoors, I go for an ISO of 200. This then allows the camera to select the shutter speed. Now, if I am going to be shooting indoors in variable lighting or indoor living room lighting, I press the ISO button and using the back dial, I take the ISO all the way round to 1000. Sometimes I go for a higher ISO than this if it's very dark, but usually for home shooting using living room lighting, an ISO of a thousand gives you good enough image quality. Now, for the final type of imagery, this would be for shooting outdoors night time with very limited lighting and long exposures. Once again, I go back to the top plate, press the mode button, and then using the back dial, I go all the way around to M for manual mode. On the back of the camera, pressing the info button, using the back dial, I take the shutter speed down to the slowest shutter speed available, which is one thirtieth of a second, and then switching to the front dial, I take the aperture to the highest number available, in this case F22, and finally for ISO, holding the button down and showing the top plate, using the rear dial, I come all the way down to ISO of 200. Well, YouTubers, here is my Nikon D700, complete with complete with 24 to 85 millimeter f 3.5 to 4.5 kit lens and battery grip. And I purchased mine as a used camera, complete with the grip and lens, in January of 2015. So the camera was purchased more than three years or near enough three years after production had ended. And uh, this particular camera had more than 84,000 counts, 84,000 shutter actions on the shutter. And uh, well, I've used it a hell of a lot in the time since then. Owned it for eight and a half years and it's never missed a beat. Well, Blood Knock fans, the Nikon D700. I think that in this video, the camera has showed itself, especially at these low used prices, the camera has showed itself to be a great starter camera for anyone who is learning the basics of photography. And also, the camera can create some amazing images. I am very happy with what I have been able to create using my Nikon D700 over these last eight and a half years. And as I say, I bought the camera in January of 2015 and it has never missed a beat. So I am very happy with the Nikon D700 and if you can find a good quality used one, I think you will also be very impressed with the camera and what it can create. Anyway, many thanks for watching. 
please like and subscribe and Dennis Bloodnut will return in the next video. Thank you.